Hello everyone, welcome to another video, and today we're not actually talking about the JP side. I'm as surprised as all of you are, but honestly, I've been kind of waiting for this to happen, because one of the things that I experienced and have kind of a fair amount of experience that people have asked me about is all about seven stars, how seven stars work, how seven stars are made, what's good, what's bad, and all of this. So I do have some advice to give global people on the first seven star batch. And I've been waiting to see what the global side did with their first seven star batch. So today I want to talk about the unit selection, the buffs, the improvements to Squall and Renoa, and the general cost of seven stars. So first of all, let's talk in general about the units that will be coming first to the first batch of the global updates. Now, taking a look at the list, the list is smaller than the first uh, JP set. Now that could be, honestly, they could be looking at the same time frame. but for JP, I believe there were a total of three really big batches of seven stars. And so things rolled out fairly quickly, and it looks like Global's kind of scaling it a little bit back. The first batch does not look quite as big. There are some definitely noticeable units that are missing, uh, such as Trans Terra, who I believe was in the first JP batch. So I want to quickly go over each of the units, because some of these units are really good value in the first bit, and... Some of them really not so much. Now, here's the important piece of news about this, and my impressions are going to be slightly different from the global version, because the global version is going to have some tweaks to the characters. Now, if you read between, if you essentially read this, tweaks do not mean major kit enhancements, major kit overhauls. I read tweaks as being essentially very small changes to the characters, seven star forms, not complete rework. So honestly, I don't expect this to be majorly different on the units that are, that are currently available on the JP side. I'm sure they'll be a little bit better, but I'm here to talk about the general overall of the units. Now, I guess another thing to mention is I'm not going to talk about Olive because Olive we don't have on the JP side. So it's really hard for me to say whether or not her 7 star will be any good. But I imagine that out of any of the units on the list, the one that could be the most exciting will probably be Olive. Still, let's move on. So the first character on the list is Lunath. Now, I don't actually have a 7 star Lunath. But 7-star Lunath has a really great super TMR. If you're not... Now, he also has some good chaining abilities for the first bit of the 7-star meta. He has some generally nice attack skills that he gets in his 7-star, and it actually revitalizes him a little bit. So, in general, I would say Lunath is a pretty good investment for the first little bit of the 7-star uh, additions to the game. Next up is Ramza. Now, I do actually have Ramza, and I have to say, without a major rework, Ramza is never going to be any kind of good. Ramza essentially has a really big problem in his kit that when the JP side came out, he basically got nothing that helped his buffing skills, and Nickel is a character that exists in the game. Like, CG Nickel is a character that exists in the game now. Even CG, six star CG Nickel is considerably better than Ramza. Now, Ramza has a good super DMR, but honestly, if you have better options or if you have more powerful units that you know are coming into the future, and Gil might be a bit of a limiting factor for you, this is not any kind of a necessity to make him immediately. Essentially, Ramza 7 star is really quite bad if you already have other options for buffers and debuffers. So I would, and even then in a 7 star, it just won't last you that long. So honestly, and I just, here's the other thing. Ramza's 7 star kit is it's it's just not going to be enough. It's not a good long-term investment. Next up, Orlando. Orlando with his TMR is considerably better. On the JP side, it was already a really big deal for him. And he was one of the units when I could make a seven star that really improved. Um, 
how much damage I can do. He is an incredibly amazing seven star uh, that powers him up, does a lot of extra damage. I'm not sure exactly how they will tweak him on the JP side, but, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the global side, but he was a very great unit. He's a great seven star for the first couple batches, so I would completely recommend Orlando as a 7-star if you have the option. He'll probably be one of the, if not the, top-tier damage dealer, and definitely he's probably the best chainer option in the first batch of 7-stars. Next up is Lightning. Now, Lightning is actually fairly uh, competent, uh, but a big thing is if you don't have a TMR for the unit, then you're going to lose out a little bit on the 7-star. Lightning will be able to do a fair amount of damage for the first bit. Uh, she drops off fairly quickly. Again, I don't think anything is majorly going to save her, and I don't think anything in her kit can potentially save her from the onslaught that is Hayu. But that being said, if she is your only damage dealer option, she's a pretty good damage dealer option for the first bit of the 7-star meta. Eh, she's your only thing. Yeah, 3 million gil is a pretty good investment on this one. Next up is Marie, and Marie is a really nice little support unit. Uh, her 7 star gives her a lot more survivability and some generally nice options, particularly a cooldown that gives a ton of elemental resistance across the board, only for one turn, but it also gives, you know, a big survivability chance of a 200% buff to defense and spirit. So her cooldown is actually pretty good for the first little bit. Other than that, she has she finally gains the ability to do light and dark resistance uh, to a really high extent. Like if you look at her kit, it's basically all of the elements except kind of darkness. So her seven star fix is uh, something that she was missing originally. Also, she has the ability to, you know, give some MP or for her MP, she can give a 2000 HP barrier. So she's an okay support unit if you don't have anything else for support. Next up is 7-star Delita. Pass. 7-star Delita's kit is so bad, unless they completely rework him, which is not in the word tweaks definition, unless Alum or Gummy is being super loose on the definition. Nothing super interesting here. Moving on. Next up is Wilhelm. Honestly, Wilhelm is one of the best long-term investments. If, as a matter of fact, on this kit, barring all of, I would give Wilhelm the 100% seal of approval of any unit on this list. Wilhelm is probably going to be your best long-term investment. He is a great cover tank, even now on the JP side, with his counters generating a lot of limit bursts. There's really not out much else to said. Wilhelm gets a 100% do it thing. Same with Orlando. Basically, Orlando and Wilhelm so far. Next up, I'm lumping Seabreeze, Dark Fina, and Dark Fina together because their kits are essentially pretty much the same thing. Now, both of them are perfectly fine units in their kits. I don't think that they are the... I mean... The big thing is in their seven star kits, uh, I mean, they'll get a lot of extra power and Tornado and Quake will be incredibly useful in Arena for many, many weeks to come. I don't have mine maxed out because there, I have Ram who does the same thing, but also can be a healer too. But long story short, um, this is a generally strong unit for Arena and probably will help you clear some of the trials where magic damage is more valuable. Dark Fina and Sea Breeze Fina both Pretty damn good units, um, seven star. If they were your only damage dealers, I'd say do it. Um, but in terms of lasting, Trans Terra will essentially destroy her probably in the second batch of units for how much magic damage she can do. All right, now we're getting near to the end of the list. Next up is Gilgamesh. Now, I really wish I could say Gilgamesh is... Gilgamesh is a really interesting character. He can equip basically every weapon in his 7-star kit, gives him killers for whatever weapon he wants to use. That's really interesting. It also gives some element. For, so Gilgamesh is a very flexible character. But in his 7-star, he really doesn't gain the attack skills he needs. Uh, if he's the only thing you got, 
he'll be fine, but keep in mind that chaining is more valuable than single strike hits. So while Gilgamesh definitely gets some power and some pretty cool killer options, honestly, he's not the greatest unit you could potentially invest in in the future. And last but not least is Dark Knight Cecil, who I don't have at all. Hopefully I'm not cursing myself. But long story short, Dark Knight Cecil is really nothing that impressive on the JP side. And again, probably would need more of a major rework to be a long-term valuable investment. If you are any of these characters, if you are going to make them, basically look at them as a mid to short term investment. They're going to be good for a little while. They'll definitely be good for a couple of batches, but there are much stronger units on the horizon. And keep in mind that the batches are at most probably one month apart from one another. So you might be looking at most of these units as essentially being a one month investment, and that's about it. And I'll talk more about the investments later. Now let's move on to Renoa as well as Squall. Now we'll talk about Squall first, because Squall is a character I actually really like. He's one of my favorite Final Fantasy characters ever. And honestly, when he came out, I went super, super, I went just really big on trying to get this guy. And I ended up getting a seven star and I was really happy. But seven star, yeah, Squall does have some very key fundamental problems. First of all, he can't really elemental imbune on his big attacks. Uh, he doesn't have good chaining options, and other than his limit burst, and then you, it's kind of difficult to find a friend unit with him, and he's locked to his TMR to get some of the biggest boosts out of him. Now, taking a look at what the news was on the global side today, Squall's five star will get a bonus on true dual has, uh, true dual hand passives as well as a stronger TM. Now, a stronger TM does help, from what I hear. It's supposed to be 150 attack, which is okay, but it really doesn't necessarily fix it, and it won't compare to later when Cloud Super TMR comes out, which is 180 attack, great hand sword, and you have to choose between Squall's TMR and that. It's not really a big competition. Squall will fall out because of that ability. And again, CG Hayu comes along, with the chaining options as well as the damaging options and way easier. And the other thing that Squall is missing is triple cast. Maybe his enhancements will have triple cast, but the fact that it's not mentioned here on the global side means that he's still gonna be missing triple cast. He's very quickly gonna be outclassed by CG Hayu and Cloud, I believe. Cloud, I think it's triple cast, maybe not. But either way, Hayu will outclass this character by a mile very quickly. and the bonuses that he's getting on global will help him be better, but probably not enough to make him long term. Damn Hayu. Anyway, next up, Renoa. And Renoa, I think, is a better investment of the two of them. Now, both Squall and Renoa's super TMRs have ended on my top super TMR list, still even now on the JP side. Renoa is basically being full status protection plus some charm protection and a big amount of elemental resistance. It essentially makes a character pretty damn survivable, so I have to say that Renoa is particularly great. Now, the GL buffs, um, she is going to get some GL buffs, probably some more passives to make her magic a little bit stronger, since she's kind of limited to her TMR again, which is a weapon. Don't get me wrong, it's a pretty good weapon, but there isn't enough magic passive TMRs that just generally buff enough. Most of the bigger buffs uh, TMRs require rods, and you lose out on Renoa's kind of benefits from equipping her own TMR, which is a problem. What will probably be her biggest benefit is the fact that she can get triple cast easier, whatever that means. If it means that she can readily access triple cast very quickly, then actually her kit might be considerably improved because she has, she has a really cool spell, which is Apocalypse. Apocalypse is a very strong spell in terms of black magic in the game, and it's pretty cool it was added, but let's face it. 
Trance Terra, as well as some other mages like CG Sakura, multicasting makes them considerably stronger. So it depends on how easy they make Renoa to get triple cast, but hopefully it's enough to bring her back in. I think that she is potentially the more interesting of the two units in terms of longevity based on the buffs that I've heard. So that is my opinion, such as it is on the seven stars that are coming and the improvements that have been announced so far. Of course, when the data comes out, I will have a better idea of exactly how these will shape out given that I have used most of these units for a long time and I remember what they were like on the JP side. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the cost of seven stars and how important seven stars were at the time they came out on JP for everyone. And yeah, the light's a little bit dark, but it's late here. Give me a break. First of all, seven star, um, when it comes to talking about seven stars, the cost can be pretty high. Three million gil adds up really quickly and the amount of, you'll find that you'll be a little bit strapped for cash if you're just constantly making seven stars if you have a ton of gill then you're probably a whale it doesn't matter or you've been playing a long time whatever do whatever you want but if you have a limited amount of gill remember 30 million gill is only 10 three or 10 seven stars and that's assuming you're not doing any enhancements for anything else with your gill in the meantime so Long story short, choose and plan ahead properly. The second thing of the cost of seven stars is the EXP amount. Max level cactars, you need at least 10 of these, and that's assuming you get no fusion rate up, but you still need about 10 of these to basically get a seven star up to level 120. The cost is super high. It takes a lot of fusing to get these guys up to level 60. Even with a fusion rate up, like it here it is here on the JP side a lot recently, it does take a lot of time and it does take a lot of resources. So be aware of that before we get in, before you start uh, choosing which units you want to actually upgrade. Now the first up to level 110 will give you most of the abilities. After that, it's stats and bonuses. But for the most part, um, getting a uh, seven star to a level 110 should be pretty good. And the stat passives you can get from fusing in pots will be fairly significant enough to their stats that it should make up for the fact that you can't get up to level 120 quickly. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about real quick is in the cost of seven stars, how much seven stars were needed. Seven stars helped clear a lot of old content very quickly. Seven stars are pretty night and day in terms of how much more damage they can do, especially certain seven stars like Trans Terra, um, Orlando, and a few other units. Uh, also, we'll throw in Renault and Squall because they did a lot of damage at the start. But seven stars can really clear a lot of the old content. New content for a while will still be kind of at the six star level and essentially made very easy by seven stars. Now, of course, that is assuming that there isn't some global exclusive trial that I'm not aware of that is basically being designed for seven, the current first batch of seven stars. Seven stars make a lot of content easier, but not they are not necessary. The first seven star content that I really thought was eh, kind of iffy on was Diablos. Diablos 3 star was kind of a tough fight when it first came out. So that might be the one that where you finally start feeling, well, okay, I need at least some seven stars. But since there's no seven star healers really in the first batch, it's not gonna be the biggest of deals probably. Long story short, seven stars at the start, there are a few that are really good in long-term investments. Wilhelm, Orlando, and maybe the two Finas, Olive, Olive is a wild card right now. We'll need to see what Olive's kit looks like. Of course, I will be watching it very closely. Renoa and Squall, very strong at the start of the seven star meta, quickly drop off because of Hayu, as well as the addition of seven star Trans Terra and seven star CG Sakura. Sorry, had to just crack my neck a little bit. 
So long story short, I think that um, the first batch of seven stars, if you can't really do that much with it yet, I wouldn't be too worried about it. There are better seven stars on the way, and eventually Hayu will come and kind of reduce any need you have for getting, you know, for not having a huge bunch of old seven stars. The only other really benefit to making seven stars is that you can make a super TMR, but I don't believe super TMRs are available to start anyway, so you don't got to worry about that. Long story short, global people, I hope this has helped you a little bit decide how to spend your resources properly. Seven stars, they are a thing, they are wonderful, but they are not necessary at the start. So anyway, Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. I'm going to go to sleep now.